In Gulf War I, our military reported in some cases that they were ill within 48 hours. And of course, they had no idea that they were using depleted uranium weapons and certainly were unaware of the harmful effects. We got sick immediately. Rashes all over their bodies. Brain damage. We were almost exhausted. Excruciating headaches. We had no uh, protection. The president lied. And really what we are are victims of Desert Storm. The civilian population will continue to be exposed to increasing levels of DU internally. In fact, depleted uranium is a death sentence. Individuals are depleted uranium casualties, whether they're civilians or combatants. These people in the Department of Defense are lying, not only to the troops, they're lying to the whole world. They're trying to pawn off our nuclear waste as an appropriate mechanism for a military arsenal. Every parent needs to decide if they're willing to send their child to be part of a military medical establishment experimentation process because that's exactly what is going to take place. We are breaking the law. If the law doesn't matter and good science doesn't matter anymore, then what does this country stand for? The last thing the men behind the curtain want is a conscious, informed public capable of critical thinking, which is why a continually fraudulent zeitgeist is output via religion, the mass media, and the educational system. They seek to keep you in a distracted, naive bubble, and they are doing a damn good job of it. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union. You might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. In fact, there is only one mainstream reporter who has actually heard of and has had the courage to cover this issue. The Bush administration's open borders policy and its uh, decision to ignore the enforcement of this country's immigration laws is part of a broader agenda. President Bush signed a formal agreement that will end the United States as we know it. And he took the step without approval from either the U.S. Congress or the people of the United States. It's a deal that few have even heard of. It's being done again by very few people at the very top on behalf of the investment class, but the working class of people, uh, political officials across our country from communities, uh, from cities and so forth, they don't know anything about this. This isn't some trade agreement. It is a total removal of sovereignty from these countries, which will also result in a completely new currency called the Amero. Fall. Um, apart from that, I think one thing people who are dollar-based need to focus on is the Amero. That's the one thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to have a big impact on, uh, on everybody's life in Canada, the U.S., and uh, Mexico. The Amero is the proposed new currency for the North American community, which is being uh, developed right now between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico to make a borderless community much like the EU, and uh, the dollar, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar, and the Mexican peso replaced by the Amero. By default of this agreement, the American Constitution will eventually be obsolete. You would think that a situation like this would be on the cover of every major newspaper. That is until you realize that the people who are behind this movement are the same people behind the mainstream media, and you are not told what you're not supposed to know. The North American Union is the same concept as the European Union, the African Union, and the soon-to-be Asian Union, and the same people are behind all of them. And when the time is right, the North American Union, the European Union, the African Union, and the Asian Union will be merged together, forming the final stages of a plan these men have been working on for over 60 years. A one world government.
one bank, one army, one center of power. And if we have learned anything from history, it is that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is Aaron Russo, a filmmaker and former politician. To his left is Nicholas Rockefeller of the infamous Rockefeller banking and business dynasty. After maintaining a close friendship with Nicholas Rockefeller, Aaron eventually ended the relationship, appalled by what he had learned about the Rockefellers and their ambitions. Uh, I got a call one day from um, an attorney woman I knew, and she said, would you like to meet one of the Rockefellers? I said, sure, I'd love to. And uh, we became friends, and um, he began to divulge a lot of things to me. So he said to me one night, he said that uh, there's going to be an event there, and and out of that event, you're going to see we're going to go into Afghanistan. So we run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We're going to go into Iraq to take the oil and establish a base in the Middle East. And we're going to go into Venezuela and then try and get, and get rid of Chavez. And uh, the first two they've accomplished, Chavez they didn't accomplish. And uh, they said you're going to see guys going into caves looking for <laughs> looking for people uh, that they're never going to find. You know, he was laughing about the fact that you have this war. On terror, there's no real enemy. He's talking about how by having this war on terror, you can never win it because this is, so it's an eternal war, and so you can always keep taking people's liberties away. And I said, how are you going to convince people that this war is real? He said, but the media, the media can convince everybody it's real. I mean, you know, it's just that you keep talking about things, you keep saying it over and over and over again, and eventually people believe it. You know, you created the Star Reserve in 1913 through lies. You create 9-11, which is another lie. Through 9-11, you, then you're fighting a war on terror, and now all of a sudden you go into Iraq, which was another lie.